Welcome to the second episode of Brutally Honest. I'm your host, Nate Dog Express, and today we will, today we will be breaking down two parts of the wrestling world. Monday Night Raw and Revolutionary Call Championship Wrestling, also known as RCCW. I'm gonna be br- I'm gonna be honest on both of them, like brutally honest, which is hence the name of the show. The first up has to be Monday Night Raw. The storylines are all meh. Reigns and Lashley had another generic pull apart brawl that Lesnar usually has with everyone, and uh, people are being kind of utilized. I mean, the only person that's being utilized right is the uh, spectacular Drew McIntyre. Keep. Like, start building him up and then give him the championship. And the whole Rollins-Ziggler rivalry is fun as well. Now, the Intercontinental Championship's prestige has been upped. Because, well, they have a champion that never shows up. Cough, cough, looking at you, Brock. And to be honest, this feud is kind of like the driving force of all. You have two amazing talents. And Rollins and Ziggler, yeah, Drew McIntyre into the mix. And it's just fun. It's honestly kind of like the driving force of Raw at this point, besides Strowman. And the Alexa versus Nia, that feud, eh. The only interesting part about, uh, I mean, pardon hiccups. The only interesting part about this feud was basically, it was basically Ronda Rousey, which I kind of never thought I'd say. But she, he, she hit Kurt Angle, uh, put Bliss through a table, and honestly, this match is just filler for Rousey versus Bliss. And let's admit, the match is just going to plain suck. You know, the last time Alexa was in a uh, ex- match with an extreme stipulation of sore at Extreme Rules. The only saving grace is that uh, these two can put on a good Extreme Rules match, but I highly doubt that's going to happen. Because it's basically just filler, and even if they do, I won't care. I don't care for the feud regardless. So that's one of the low points. I mean, this feud's not one of the low points, but the fact that it's just filler and we all know it is a low point. And now we have Lashley versus Roman, which I want the match to be good. I think it may deliver, but the predictability kills it for me. I mean, Reigns is uh, Vince. Just, Vince's push on Reigns is never going to end. But. Lashley could always come out on top, but I am honestly picking Roman to win. Not because he's my favorite, but because I just think it's going to happen. A lot of people are saying Roman's going to win. And if that does happen, then it's another case of predictability. I mean, of course Roman's going to win. He's been on a mean streak. Lashley is probably just going to build himself up some more before he gets to the title. Plus, Vince just loves Roman straight, period. But however, a pro to this feud... That what I would really like is that Lashley or Roman turns heel if they lose. Because Lashley still has a chance. And I love Lashley's heel work and uh, impact. It was great. Being a, a great heel is in Roman's bloodline. Honestly, a heel, tur- her, a heel turn could work I- for either of these two. However, Roman got over with the fans and it could possibly hurt his merch sales. But I don't think it will. And honestly, it would benefit Lashley more because... I don't really care for him at the moment, but hopefully, if Lashley can just get that spark in him, I will some more. By that, I basically mean care some more, because heel Lashley is money, to be honest. I He, he deserves better than to be stuck in fe- awful feuds with Sami Zayn in freaking tag matches. So, I mean, at least it's something for him. And I know they're both in contender for one of the biggest low points of Raw. The lack of appearances by the Universal Champion, Brock Lesnar. He's only defended 10 times and already passed CM Punk's number of days as champion. Which, honestly, AJ AJ Styles should be doing. But the lack of a top title is... uh, Which is why Rollins and Ziggler should be main eventing Extreme Rules. I don't care who who beats him. Lashley, Reigns, I don't care. As long as we can just see Brock go from WWE... Well, Brock will, uh, Brock will be seeing some success in UFC if he can pass the drug test. But without Brock Lesnar, 
Some ticket sales may not be sold. I mean, some tickets may not be sold. But who cares? We have an active, we'll be having an active Universal Champion. And that's what counts because at least other companies have an active top champion. Other brands. And the other feuds on Raw are, eh. Be, all B-Team is doing right now is impersonating the leaders of Worlds and beating them in singles matches. A formulatic thing. Well, it's basically kind of a formula they use. You know, yeah, reverse momentum. That's predictable. Uh, what other titles are there? What other feuds? Think, Nate. Balor versus Corbin is a meh for me. Strowman's basically tossing around with Owens, and as fun as that is, it can get old. And uh, Sasha and Bailey are having bad counseling sessions that don't help at all. See, they're trying to tear each other apart. Why do they? Why do they need counseling, Kurt? Why? Sasha's been torturing Bailey. Bailey strikes back, and she needs counseling, Kurt. Really? Doesn't matter if Raw's viewership goes up or not. It's still, in my view, worse than SmackDown, and kind of a can get unwatchable at times. Un However, the next company I'm about to talk about is watchable, but also has its flaws as well. The next company I'll be basically being honest about is our CCW, consisting of Battleground, Avalanche, and 240 Live. And a certain highlight of all three of those shows that is a high point this year is none other than Timmy Turner. You see, he simply went from being just another Knit Club member to one of the high points and key players in our CCW history. He did something new and refreshing, if we're speaking out of character. Uh, he hit Black Heron's wife with the spiked elbow pad somehow. But it's new and refreshing because that's never happened before. It's not, he, it's not really a case of rinse, wash, and repeat. He doesn't do it a lot. This is legit the first time. He's great on the mic. He's a great in-ring worker, and he has all and he has a lot of talent. <laughs> he and Dipper Pines were kind of like equals, as you saw at Ingrid We Trust. They put on a great match, tore the house down. Match of the night. Nothing else is going to change my opinion. However, there is a low point to Timmy Turner. The list of Turner. It's not technically bad, but I feel it's it's kind of a uh, taking something from Jericho. And when I think of the list of Turner, I think of Jericho, not Timmy Turner. But, uh... I mean, if he, he, if he wants to keep it, he can. Because on uh, the recent Avalanche, he said it was making a comeback. So... I mean, I'm not, there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. I feel that's kind of unoriginal. <laughs> and, you know, you just made the list and all that. It's kind of copying off Jericho. While Timmy doesn't really do that, I feel like Timmy needs to be needs to become the first Timmy Turner. Like invent his own personal thing that he can use, if Rick wants to do that. Uh, and it, it's not bad. I'm not saying the list of Turner is bad. It's it's just kind of a a duplicate of the list of Jericho. And uh, well. <laughs> T as long as the list of Turner doesn't show up too much like every episode like you just made the list you just made the list it, I'll be fine with it because if he does it like way too much then everyone's going to be able to tell that everyone's going to get tired of it basically in recent I mean the list of Turner's rarely appeared so I'm good with that but in recent weeks however <laughs> Timmy Turner has been defending his 240 championship against Galindo. Yeah, I don't know who you is, who you are in Santino. The fact that he fights like jobbers and kind of like nobodies with weak finishers, that just adds on to the heat because he's like, see, I earned my way to refuse to lose. And while that is true that he did, he won clean. Uh, he needs more competition, basically. That's my only really nit nitpick besides the list of Turner about Timmy Turner. Everything else, you, you keep doing what you're doing. The list of Turner is kind of unoriginal and needs to face someone more like competition so he can take him seriously during his reign. If he beats 
some good competition clean, imagine how much shockwaves he'll make. Imagine how good he'll prove himself. But other than the list of Turner and a lack of competition for him that that's not Dipper, uh, Timmy Turner's pretty good. Hopefully he has a good reign going forward. And uh, now he has kind of revitalized the 240 division as champ. But let me move on to a topic that Rick admits is true. His world title division... The Giant Leathers champ has been meh. The world title division's kind of forgettable. Hopefully, uh, the guy he's facing, Vlad, can help build the feud up more to where we'll actually notice it. His feud versus Jason, I honestly didn't really care for. I, I just made the package because I just wanted to help contribute to the show, hype it up to make people actually know that it's happening, because... Uh, when I was making packages, I cared for this to the least, but I had to do it. I had to get it done. Which is why it was the video package that looked like it had the least effort out of the four that were displayed that night, in my honest opinion. Which shows, kind of shows Giant Leather's <laughs> title there. He ba he, all he basically did was beat Jason, and now he's fighting Vlad. Dr. K is basically the mouthpiece, and Vlad tosses around. It's kind of forgettable, to be honest. Hopefully, Leather's reign can... I mean, I know he's probably going to beat Vlad, but hopefully Leather's reign can I either get better or end after that, because someone with more personality should be the champ than Leather. Lincoln Lowe with his personality, charisma, he puts on good matches. Nice shirt, by the way. Jordan Oliver has charisma. We like him. He's likable. Bart and Flash have personality and charisma and ring skill. But they need some more building up. Even some 240 guys have charisma. And they could um, carry the top title. I mean, with the way Lincoln's been booked, he could definitely win the title. He does have the men's gift of greed. So, I mean, he... He has personality, charisma, in-ring skill, mic skill. He can definitely carry the top title. It doesn't matter how over-pushed he may be. He makes views. He gets, he earns the likes for Rick. I mean, Rick earns them, but he's one of the reasons why people like, you think RCCW, you think Lincoln Loud. Straight period. The only issues I have with RCCW is the world title division. Pretty much that. Minor complaints about Timmy Turner, but everything else is okay. I like it. The company definitely has a future, and honestly, the guy deserves more subscribers. That was a detailed breakdown for you, man. Thank you for joining me on Nate Dog Express, Brutally Honest, Episode 2. I hope you heard the uh, details I gave. You don't have to change the stuff that I got on to. I mean, if if you feel like, I don't know, you don't have to fuck, you, know, you don't have to do what I suggest. Follow your own future. But, uh, yeah, that's all for episode two, and I'll see you guys in episode three.